Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald on the square in Petersburg, where the Port of High School students, the Community Problem Solvers Group, they don't know any small projects. You know, there wasn't an art gallery on the square in Petersburg, but that didn't bother the high school students. They went ahead and they found a vacant building and they said, we're going to put one in. And they did. Well, Katie Daniel, there's something special about the Prairie Palette Art Gallery. Not, not every community has an art gallery, number one. And number two, not every community has an art gallery that's run by high school students. That's pretty, pretty nifty. Yeah, um, we created this gallery about three years ago and we've been running it ever since. We hope to eventually give it up to a board of both gallery, um, gallery members, adults, and to students. Mm -hmm. But we've created this gallery. It's been our project all along. And you, you, you're a senior at Porta yes. High School, and you're in a group called Problem Solvers, right? The Community Pro Problem Solvers. Community Problem Solvers. So you've been working on this. You and your colleagues have been working on this for the better part of four years, I guess, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How'd it get started? Um, well, we've always kind of wanted to bring something with a little more culture into Menard County. We thought about doing a bronze sculpture of Abraham Lincoln, mm -hmm. but due to costs, we decided that was unreasonable. Yeah. We've looked at different things, and we just, when this opportunity for this building came up, we decided that this would be a good opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're on the square, um, and we're right next to Petersburg City Hall. And when you all looked at this building the first time, there was nothing here. It was empty, wasn't it? Yeah, it yeah. was actually separated into three different rooms which have all been combined now to this one mm -hmm. big space. Will you take us through? Sure. Let's take a little walk through here. Now, this, this space doesn't look, as you walk in, it doesn't look very big, but there's a second half to this in the back, which is very useful. And I mean, my goodness, the lighting is really, really bright and, and uh, it, it lights things up in here. It's really neat. Yeah, when we designed it, we had to think of all those different things. We had to get the wall, the wall coloring just right and we inserted the Rights ourselves mm -hmm. so that it would be just right for this kind of thing and we decided on the blue um, carpet as a neutral color mm -hmm. so that it would all kind of come together and look uniform I guess. During the course of this program we're going to get it this is kind of cool because we're going to get a t chance to talk to some of your fellow students. You guys had a lot of sw sweat equity in this thing I mean you guys had to get in and tear out the ceiling and tear out the walls and replace all this stuff so we're going to get a look at what the old place looked like. We can see now how gorgeous the new place looks, um, the work that went into that. And we can also talk to some of the artists that show their work here, because this is a really nice opportunity for local artists who maybe don't have other outlets for people to see their work. Yeah, that was one of our purposes behind this gallery was because there's so many artists in the area, and a lot of them, a lot of them are known, but a lot of them aren't. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are just amateurs that do maybe one or two paintings, but haven't got a um, ongoing mm -hmm. project. Right, right. So this was their chance to get their stuff out and to mm -hmm. be recognized. Okay, this is your chance too to show me something that you did. So let's let's just walk over here real quick. And while we talk about while we talk about problem solvers, community problem solvers, and the legacy that you all have left the city of Petersburg, we can look at, this is one by one Katie Daniel here, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Okay, what, what were you going for when you, when you, it's a sketch, right? It's done in pen and ink. Pen so. and ink, yes. okay. What were you thinking? Um, it was just a, more than anything, it's about togetherness and just like the heart just represents like trying to be one. Mm -hmm. and very yeah. nice, very nice. Now, the, on this project, you, you actually have, you won a competition on this project, and you now go you get national attention, don't you? Yes. How does that work? Well, Community Problem Solvers is an off-branch of Future Problem Solvers, which is an international corporation mm -hmm. or program. And we won the state level. We beat out, I think, four teams mm -hmm. to win the state level this year. And so we get to go to internationals. And in the past, we have won in, at internationals three times. Really? Yes. The first time was for uh, Lincoln's Prairie Festival, mm -hmm. um, which was held just around Petersburg. We ran that for three years. And then immediately after they handed that over to the Chamber of Commerce, they turned to what is now Hurry Park. And they created the park. They designed it and put in flower beds 
playground equipment, yeah. rock pathways and everything. And they took that to internationals and they won once. Mm -hmm. And then the next year they got a $50,000 grant that they then used to upgrade everything. Wow. And it was designed to be a floodplain park. Mm -hmm. And that year a flood did come through and the entire park was underwater and it still managed to hold up. That's wonderful. Adults should be that successful, you know, in these community <laughs> projects. Thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> Well, Michael Paulsmeyer, three years ago, this was a usable building, but it was not a thing of beauty. We're, lo we're looking at the old paneling that was in here. It wouldn't have made a very good art gallery, would it? No, this was actually an old office space that was made around the 50s, and of course they did things differently in the 50s, like you see the paneling, that was kind of something that they liked doing that in the 50s, so we had to get rid of we had to get rid of all the paneling because it was just not suitable for an art gallery. Something yeah. It was not what we wanted in our art gallery. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and, and it wouldn't be in, it really suitable for any art gallery. But what I'm going to do is go through here a little bit and look at some of these pictures because what you all had to do is you had to get rid of the paneling and then you had to put, what, new, new wallboard up? Yes. Whenever we There's took a good off shot the paneling, right there. Um, there was wallboard behind the paneling, but the, the wall, whenever we took it out, the wallboard just completely destroyed, and the paneling completely destroyed the wall board, yeah. so we had to replace all of that, and that was kind of a big unexpected expense for us. Yeah, yeah. You also had certain things like, you know, you have a drop ceiling here, and over the years, those frames that hold the drop ceiling, they, they really get nasty, don't they? Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> we had to replace everything in the ceiling. The city council um, did that as part of the renovation of the building. They removed the asbestos tiles for us and, yeah. and replaced the tiles. Uh, we kept the grates though, the, um, the filters. We had to sand over those and repaint those, so that was quite a job for us. Yeah. And we had to get new lighting. The, the old lighting in here was kind of a, an orange incandescent light. It was just not good Ooh, for Oh, terrible our for art, particularly. Yes. I mean, it doesn't look people, it doesn't make people look very good, but it makes art look even worse, doesn't it? Yes. When you get that old kind of crummy light. But it is so bright in here now, bright, and, and the, the quality of the light, it really makes, brings things to life, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, we had a, um, somebody was getting rid of their lights in a show, a new show, in their showcase, and they're replacing them, so someone was actually able to donate these lights to us. And how did you know how to out. do this stuff? Uh, we have a, a contractor do most of the work for us. Uh, they, um, there's only so many things that students can do themselves. Yeah. So we had a lot of the stuff done mm -hmm. by a contractor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, you sure did a nice job. And, and it, it was a long, a long job too, because it took a couple of years. Yes, it? it did. Yeah. Well, congratulations, you got it looking good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, Tommy Schaefer, it's, it's one thing to, to build a space and to get it looking right and to get the light right and everything, but then somebody has to decide, well, what's going to go on the walls? <laughs> you know, what art, what art right. are we going to use? How do we fill up this gallery? And, you know, that's, that's something that uh, art gallery curators all over the country deal with and all the time, and it looks like you've had a little bit of practice. Looking good. Well, uh, we always start out by finding our artists after... We, we find the name of the show we want to do first. Like this one's called Reflections, and the idea was that we're trying to reflect back on spring, and um, you know, it's a time of renewal, mm -hmm. springtime and everything, and we want to go back and reflect on maybe what winter meant to us. And as you can see, a lot of the art here uh, is very shiny and reflecty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what we do is we contact our artists. We have a list of artists that we already have, and we go um, down that, and we contact them first, and then also what we do is we go to other art shows and we say like, oh, well, we really like that. Maybe we want them in our gallery. Mm -hmm. So we find their name, find their address, add them to the list. You've got a really a, a nice variety of things. You've got some, some handmade musical instruments here, wood bowls, you've got pottery, you've got you know, painting, mm -hmm. all, all kinds of media. Um, but somebody has to decide, well, where is that going to go on the wall? I mean, because mm -hmm. there's a whole logistical process, isn't it? Right. Um, it really depends on how far you want the art to be from each other. You need area to put the little identification cards. Mm -hmm. um, we do get a lot of help from the artist you're probably going to talk to later, Lynn Westfall. And uh, 
she kind of came and she's like, hey, I know how to hang art galleries. So we're like, great, we oh, have no great. idea. We have no idea, right? So <laughs> she came in and helped us understand oh, how things great. need to work, how colors yeah. need to blend. And yeah, so you get all kinds of help from the community. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, this, the problem solvers wouldn't exist without community help. Oh, would. no. We yeah. get a lot more help from the community than a lot of other community problem solver yeah. teams do. Yeah. I, I want to walk in there, and I've got a special request for you to show us something, because I know, I know you're an artist yourself. Uh, and if not, if you don't want to call yourself an artist, you can call yourself a, what, a, 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 a sweater builder, sure. I guess. <laughs> but this is, a, this is a beautiful thing right here. You made this, didn't you? Yeah. Not too, ma not too many lads do their knitting at home <laughs> in the evening, you know? It's something to do to relieve stress. Um, <laughs> the art gallery is pretty stressful sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet it is. Well, a lot of decisions to make, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Um, and it takes a lot of your time. Yeah, that sweater took about two years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And have you ever worn it? I've worn it once. Really? Why just once? Uh, it was really hot. I finished it ah. right when the season turned into uh, being too just hot to wear sweaters. Just in the nick of time, huh? Yeah. So you're going to let it hang here until winter comes, and then you'll take it back again, huh? Yep. Okay. Thanks. Katrina Fricky. Now this, this bed and, I think it's a bed and breakfast yes, now. This is a beautiful old Petersburg home. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, it won a competition in Springfield, and you all are familiar with the artist, so she lets you hang it here. Yes, and it's a beautiful piece of work, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of indicative of a lot of the art you have in here. It's very, very nice. Let, let's take a walk down here and just kind of look at some of this as we go. Um, you, I wanted to talk to you because obviously I have questions about mm -hmm. How do you raise money for a project like this? Because, you know, you, you guys, you, you do all these projects year after year, and they're expensive, aren't they? Yes, they are. Um, this one, we figured out would cost about $20,000, and we raised it all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but not without the community support. Yeah. We, the very first fundraiser we did was we did a um, silent auction at the Christmas in Petersburg celebration. Mm -hmm. And we went around to a bunch of businesses and artists, and they donated their items. And we put together this huge um, silent auction. And then there was an ice storm that day. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. So there were people who still came, though, and were very thankful. We mm -hmm. did raise quite a bit of money, mm -hmm. and that helped kick it off. Yeah. And um, so after that, we've done silent auctions with the JCs. And we did a trivia night with the Town and Country Women's Club. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had a bunch of donations like from the Shriners. And they, and with the JCs, they helped us get $5,000 from Rich Brower. And that helped. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you gotten comfortable with asking people for money yet? Because I know when you do a, when you do a sign on auction, you've got to call a lot of people yeah. and ask for all kinds of donations. And a lot of times they have to be really good products because People don't want to pay yeah. for much for, yes. you know, stu just yeah. stuff. Well, you get comfortable, but it's still kind of nerve-wracking going to someone and asking for something because, you know. <laughs> they can always say no. Right? Yeah, they can always say no. <laughs> but they are usually extremely helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it's been a very good experience for you, hasn't mm -hmm. it, to learn how all this works because, you know what, I mean, our station a lot of companies, a lot of not-for-profits, mm -hmm. they do this all the time. Mm -hmm. this, is the way, this is the way things work. So it's a really good experience. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Charlene, at the Prairie Palette, there is always a quilt on display, and the quilt on display happens to be yours. Yes. <laughs> so you must be very honored that oh, you I have am. this spot. I am honored, but I also try to support these problem solvers. Mm -hmm. And Mary Meese, she's wonderful mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. and she, so, she's their facilitator, their coach, right? Yes. She's a teacher at the school. She yeah. is. Yeah. And that's how I first knew her. And now she's a neighbor of mine, which mm -hmm. is lovely. That's great. You know, you've had a great honor. I'm, I'm going to hold up this book. It's called History from the Heart, A Two-Century Heritage of Illinois Quilts. You have not one, but two quilts in this book. The one that, of course, we're looking at, which is fascinating. And then back here, there's another one. Quite different and from that one the example I call that we're seeing. The fireworks quilt, and it has yeah, not I can been see exhibited. Uh, wow! But it's on the wall mm -hmm. of our bedroom. And when I first looked at it in the book, and there it was on the wall. 
You know, what a sure. feeling. Sure, I bet. You know, you brought this sample along. I didn't even have to ask you to do this. My viewers are going to love this because you can show us how you put pieces together to form an entire quilt. What, what have you done here? This sort of a this is sort sort of a subset of what a, a quilt would look like. Well, I made more than I needed so that I could play with colors more, mm -hmm. and I tried very hard not to get. Uh, the same kind of thing next to each other. I didn't want polka dots next to each other mm -hmm. and uh, flowers next to each mm -hmm. other. I wanted it different all mm -hmm. the way down. And of course each one of these is a different shape and a different size too, but somehow you make them all work together. Well, and then what you do is that you take, uh, there are big rulers these days that quilters use, mm -hmm. and you lay it on there on a cutting board and then you cut whatever size you want. This is beautiful. Thanks for sharing it with us. Well, I think it's also uh, crayons that <laughs> influenced me on this. Do you remember when you were in grade school and you got a new box of crayons? Oh, sure. yeah. And it was so exciting. When I first got the great big box of crayons, they even had gold and silver. <laughs> and Before you lost them and you got them all dull. <laughs> Remember no, when they'd get dull? <laughs> well, you, could, you learned how to sharpen them. Yeah. But, uh, and of course, no gold or silver here, but the colors of mm -hmm. a rainbow in the sky mm -hmm. is here. And then the point up is uh, just to keep your spirits up. Mm -hmm. Look at that and feel better. Well, Kate Warman, you're one of the artists who have been showing her work here since the beginning of this museum. In fact, you're, you're more involved than just an artist. You're, you're on a board that's going to really help drive this thing forward in the future, aren't that's you? That's correct. Yeah. We just got our board started uh, just a month ago, mm -hmm. getting our members established and the direction we want this gallery to go and our mm -hmm. education program as well. Yeah, and, and you mm -hmm. teach art in summer school here, so mm -hmm. you're very involved with, with mm -hmm. the high school and the students. I wanted to show some of your watercolors because, mm -hmm. this, particularly these two smaller ones, because they're just so precious. Where, do you know where, where did you see this, or did you see this? Anymore? Yeah, the uh, theme for this show was reflections, and we were kind of thinking of spring. It's a long winter for everybody. Oh yeah. And I just went down to a creek, just out walking the dogs one day, and this was just near the Cass Menard County line near my house, and the sun was coming up, and the theme was reflections. So I took that and just did a quick kind of watercolor study of it. Mm -hmm. And this, I like to play around with a more non-representational style of florals or birds and just kind of the native Illinois landscape. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Now, you know, you're, you're a, a living example that you can put watercolors on almost anything. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to show this gourd over here. And if you don't mind picking that up for us no. and showing it to us, I know mm -hmm. it's fragile and I don't want to touch it, but not too this, this was not orange or red when you no. got a hold of it, was no. it? This is a typical birdhouse gourd that you often see birdhouses made from them. And they're very tough, and gourds have been used for many, many years as containers mm -hmm. and for water storage and food. And a lot of artists just work with them and just do something artistic with them. Show, show so, us the color, uh, the native color of this gourd yeah, before you start. Yeah, the actual color of the gourd is this area here, and I just poured watercolors over it and then did a polyurethane finish to uh, mm -hmm. make it last. So it's just a watercolor paint drizzled over a gourd. Yeah, a, a, a mm -hmm. sort of a beige colored uh, nondescript mm -hmm. gourd yeah. until mm -hmm. you make it look very descriptive. Huh? Yep. Put that one down mm -hmm. and I want you to show us this one back here because okay. I particularly like this one because you really see the gourdness, <laughs> <laughs> the gourdness of it. Um, this is a really neat work of art here. This is a Thank lot you. more detailed and a lot more involved than the other one because you've got all kinds of designs that you've uh, Put in here, but what mm -hmm. I the reason I wanted to show this one in particular is because I'm going to show the inside, and we've all seen the insides of gourds and pumpkins and stuff, and there's a lot of goo in there. Well, how do you deal yeah. with that when you when you want to preserve? Um, if you cut a fresh gourd, it's full of goo, just like a pumpkin. Yeah. And these guys I let lay out in the garden for a year, and that foamy stuff on the inside, that's what lupus sponges are made out of gourds, mm -hmm. dries, and you can just peel all that out, and I try to smooth this down as best as possible, so mm -hmm. there's really nothing to it once they've dried out. That's and they become very hardy and tough. And it weighs almost nothing. No. Mm -mm. I mean, and, and mm -hmm. you grow these gourds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm an <laughs> so obsessional gardener as well as an artist. This is, this is really an affordable media for you. Isn't oh, absolutely, it? <laughs> absolutely. A little wood stain that was already sitting on a shelf and gourds. And, well, that's beautiful. Yeah, not a lot of investment there. I, I, I think they're very lucky to have you. Oh, thank you. Thanks. 
Michael Blankenship, we are looking at your bowls that you hand turn. Actually, you hand everything. You hand cut them and do it, do it all by hand, don't you? Yes, sir. And, and maybe remarkably, um, we, we have to make the note that you don't see. Not at all. You do all this by feel. Yep. And uh, they're, they're, they're remarkable pieces of work. Why did you get attracted to wanting to make wooden bowls? Uh, after I lost my sight, I was, had nothing to do. I was just bored to death. A uh, gentleman come into the sawmill with a homemade bowl and I was fascinated by it. And he says, well, you ought to be able to do that. And I went home and taught myself to do it. No kidding. I'm going to hand you one of these mm -hmm. now. And, and uh, this is, uh, I, I think it's maybe Buckeye. I'm not sure. Spalted but, Buckeye. It, it, out let, of the American let, Buckeye hold tree. Hold still because, my goodness, it is so beautiful. And the variety, I wish you could see this, Michael. The variety <laughs> Everyone of, says, of the Boy, color in the wood is that. just remarkable. But what does it take now to turn, to turn something like this, to make a bowl out of a hunk of wood? Well, this ends up, starts out as a log, and then we cut mm -hmm. it into a square chunk. I take it home. Put it on the bandsaw and I cut it into an octagon to kind of get some balance in it. Mm -hmm. Put it on the lathe that spins at about 1500 RPMs a minute. Turn it into a bowl about one inch thick all the way around. That way I only dry in one inch of wood. Mm -hmm. Cover it with a wax emulsion, set it in a corner for eight to 12 months, bring it back out, put it back on the lathe and then I turn it nice and thin into mm -hmm. the shape of the bowl. Mm -hmm. So you want to you wanna start turning it when it's green, when it's, when it's got a lot of moisture in it and then let it dry and finish it up later. Right, it's softer, it's easier to turn mm -hmm. to get all this dug out of the center. There's a lot mm -hmm. of waste in, in a bowl. Oh, okay. And it only one inch has to dry instead of the whole five uh, inch, okay. 12 right. inch square. Let me take that and mm -hmm. hand you another one. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, I'm going to let you describe that one uh, to the viewers there. This is cherry. And you know that just by the feel. Because I've turned several cherry bowls, mm -hmm. and the cherry bowls turn better, easier, more balanced, and I'm able to do more detail to them. Mm -hmm. to do you also lip. like to work with that when it's green and wet? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is that true of every wood? Yes, if I can get it wet, I, can, I would rather do it wet. It's mm -hmm. easier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it kind of a messy procedure? Turning uh, these things on Oh, yes, very messy. <laughs> I got a half inch of sawdust all over my workshop. <laughs> well, maybe you ought to try pottery if you really like <laughs> messes, right? <laughs> you know, a woman almost talked me into trying pottery, but I just never, I thought, oh, I can't do that, so I didn't try it. Yeah, I bet you can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Lynn Westfall, interestingly, you're the featured artist on this, uh, in this exhibit, and it's called Reflections. Yes. And so, heck, why not have some mirrors, right, for people <laughs> yes. to look at? And isn't, isn't that kind of nifty the way that worked out? Yeah, I just happened to be working on mirrors when Mary mm -hmm. told me the theme was going to be Reflections, yeah, so I made a few more. And you are standing right in front of another one that you've, that you've put together there. I want to go back to this one, because uh -huh. this is such an interesting combination of colors and cuts of glass. This is called fused Yes, glass. it is. What do you, how do you do it? Well, first of all, this was this was a couple uh, days worth of work all day, and I love doing it because I just would pick out colors I like together, and I would cut them into little triangles. Mm -hmm. They all started out as triangles, and um, I I just laid them on a kiln shelf in the shape I wanted, and I fused them in the kiln, so they mm -hmm. all came together. Now, what it involved afterwards were I had to clean out all these little areas with a hand file, smooth mm -hmm. them down, which I hadn't planned on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoyed that technique, so I went on and I did these to match mm -hmm. and, and a big piece over there. Oh, yeah. You, you've got dozens of pieces here and we can't see them all, but you go from those vivid colors over there to one that's like this, like this is translucent vase. This is gorgeous, too. Thank and this you. is also fused, huh? It's slumped, it's actually. It's slumped, okay. Uh -huh. It's just beautiful. Slumped over a, a form. Mm-hmm. That one's been real popular. Yeah. Wow. Very, very pretty stuff. Thank you for sharing it with us. Well, Mary Meese, it seems like there's no end to the variety here. Now we're looking at some decoys and some wildlife and puzzles and maybe some 50s art. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Um, yes. It's as though a freshman English teacher doesn't have enough to do. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, but I really enjoy doing this. I, mean, I have uh, been a sponsor for the Community Problem Solvers for more than 15 years mm -hmm. and we've worked through a variety of projects and I, I really love doing this. To me this is what it's all about. Yeah, you know you, you were telling me earlier that community problem solvers doesn't take on any small challenges. Not usually. They're always big jobs. This one it, it took years. 
-hmm. didn't it? And it's still going. It's still taking. It's, it's going to take. Yeah, it's going to take mm -hmm. more years because mm -hmm. it's not finished yet, and somebody has to be here to oversee all that's going on. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because we got a chance to talk to the students, your students, and they all seem to be up to the challenge. They are. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a learning process. It's a life process, and you know everything that I've heard lately. Um, in education is that to bring the community into education, take education into the community, and this is it. This really is it. Mm -hmm. This is this is the ultimate uh, educational process, and it pulls the community into the school and puts the school in the community, mm -hmm. and they work together, and, and it's been really successful. Petersburg uh, supports this uh, this group. And this particular project goes beyond Petersburg. It takes in all of Menard County. Greenview mm -hmm. and Athens are also yeah. involved in this, all the little towns. And then we reach out a little bit to Sangamon and Cass County, about a 50, 60 mile yeah. radius. Well, that's wonderful. I, I, I want to thank you for letting us come in and, and show off your beautiful artwork here. Thank you for coming. We thank appreciate you. it. Okay. Um, this Prairie Palette Gallery on the square in Petersburg will be open through the summer on Saturday and Sundays from noon to four. but. In this space, there will also be classes going on throughout the summer, so you might be able to get in here and take a look around at some other time. If you can't make it during those times, call ahead for an appointment. With another Illinois Story in Petersburg, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. A DVD copy of this episode of Illinois Stories, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, broadcast date, and topic. You may also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605 or by using our secure server by going online to networkknowledge.tv.